Oh, man, I wish I was famous. <laughs> Oh my god, it's the all-knowing and all-powerful Sokka Monkey. Yeah, yeah, whatever, look. I'm here to grant you a wish, so what do you want, kid? I wish to become a star. A real-life star. Alright, your wish is granted. But hey, there are several stages to becoming a star, so you gotta listen to everything I say very closely. Tell me, what do stars first start off as? Nothing, of course. It serves nothing. Nothing but a cloud of gas and dust. Like, literally? Or is there like an underground... This light? dust is known as an interstellar cloud, and it requires a little kickstart to get going. Hey, I don't think we're talking about the same kind of star. This requires a lot of energy, often from a supernova, density waves, or the death of other stars. Um, excuse me? Omnipotent sock monkey? I don't think you know what type of star I'm referring to. You said a real life star, correct? This is a real life star. Look, you gotta be more specific next time. Anyway, soon after you start contracting and you begin to fragment and heat up. This is stage two. Can I revert my wish, please? Once you reach 10,000 Kelvin, you are now a protostar and can now appear on the HR diagram. This is the end of stage three. Pretty please, can I please revert my wish? No. At stage five, temperature increases and luminosity decreases, and it approaches the main sequence. The core is now five million Kelvin, halfway there to start a nuclear fusion. Okay, how long does this process take? I don't want to be sitting here forever. You're almost there, I promise. 10 million years after you first appear on the HR diagram. 10 million years? I only got three of those left. In stage six, you finally become a real star after your core reaches 10 million Kelvin, but you're not done yet. You finally land on the main sequence in stage seven, where you'll remain for most of your dull, uneventful life. Do you hate me or is like, what's going on here? Hey, big man, at least you're a star now. Some never even get the energy to start making a star. We call these guys clinkers, or we can specifically refer to them as brown dwarfs. These guys are very dim and weigh more than 12 Jupiter masses, just like your mom. Okay, you literally appeared out of nowhere, made fun of me and my mom, and I'm just supposed to believe everything you say? Like, how do we even know about like interstellar gas and proto stars and stuff that even exists. An excellent segue into our next topic. We can actually see this process happening by observing emission nebulae. Nearby stars excite the space clouds, and we can observe the gas changing in density and therefore contracting. This explains the first two stages. In the Orion Nebula, we can actually see small areas of great density, and we can see intense emission lines in these areas. This shows stages 3 through 5. We can see protostars through infrared radiation, and we can actually see some interesting phenomena, such as protostellar winds, which are ejected gases as a result of surface activity of said protostars. Protostars can also form disks, which can help create a bipolar flow in which matter is ejected. You following? I guess. But space clouds don't just form one star. They form many thousands of stars that make up star clusters. Because these stars form in the same conditions, studying them gives us a lot of information. There are two main types of clusters. Open clusters, which are made up of a few thousand stars and are found in the plane in the Milky Way, and globular clusters, which have millions of stars and are found away from the plane in the Milky Way. Globular clusters are much older. I still don't really know how any of this is relevant to me. Why does everything have to be about you? Okay, you know what, fine. Let's talk about how you die. On the main sequence, the star burns hydrogen in its core, and this is called hydrogen core burning. Wow, what a creative name. After the hydrogen starts to run out, however, 
the star relies on helium. This changes the star's composition, and after the helium core starts to deplete, a hydrogen shell starts to burn energy. Can you guess what this process is called? Hydrogen shell burning? Yep, this is stage 8 and the star actually starts to get larger. The star is now called a subgiant and lies on the subgiant branch of the HR diagram. After the core continues to turn hydrogen into helium, its radius gets larger, which increases luminosity. Therefore, it moves up in the HR diagram. And this is the red giant branch, which is stage 9. Okay, how many total stages are there? There are 14 total stages to become- 14? Can we speed it up, please? <sighs> When hydrogen runs out, helium gets used, and the star gets bigger when helium starts running out. Carbon gets made, but it cannot be fused. Therefore, it gets larger and larger until its envelope gets ejected to space, forming a planetary nebula. But the core still remains as a white dwarf, which is very hot and dense, and then it forms into a black dwarf over time. Questions? Yeah. When is this going to be over? Not anytime soon if you keep complaining. The mass of a star determines how long it takes to evolve, and more massive stars leave the main sequence first. Binary system stars evolve differently from normal stars. Their Roche lobes can give the other star some of its mass, which can lead to star formations not possible by single stars. Novas are also super cool things formed by binary star systems. They change in brightness very quickly as a result of a companion white dwarf sapping its mass. Don't stars also explode? Some of them do, yes. Stars heavy enough to have iron in the core split to protons and neutrons, and the protons collide with electrons to form more neutrons. And when neutrons collide, the core is a shockwave throughout the entire star, making it kaboom. Are there any supernovae in our galaxy? Not really, but we know that they did happen because of supernova remnants, which are shells of debris expanding outward from one area in space. Many different elements are actually made in many different ways. Most elements are formed inside the cores of stars through a process called nucleosynthesis. Helium captures when helium fuses into elements up to iron, and elements beyond iron formed by neutron capture, which happens rapidly during a supernova, forming new and improved elements that you humans use here on Earth. But supernovae form more than just new elements. After an explosion, the remnant, or left over the star's core, can remain as a neutron star very high dense stellar object. How big is a neutron star? An average one is about 20 kilometers across, so they are extremely small and massive. How can something be small and massive? Massive as in has tons of mass, you degenerate. Oh, and speaking of degeneracy, a neutron star can only condense so much before it physically can't anymore, and this is called neutron degeneracy pressure. The average density of these objects is about 10 to 18 kilograms over meters cubed, which is almost as dense as you are. When are you going to leave? Because neutron stars have magnetic fields and rotate, they send periodic bursts of energy out of their poles. These are called pulsars. Neutron stars in binary systems can take matter from its companion, forming an accretion disk that heats up and creates lots of x-rays. This heats up enough to fuse hydrogen and it does so violently in an X-ray burster. This results in a slow pulsar called a millisecond pulsar. Gamma-ray bursts also exist, but I don't really want to go into that. Why not? Because believe it or not, explaining astronomy to teenagers runs me a very tight schedule, and it just so happens we're on our last topic for the day. Black holes. These bad boys form from stars that have so much gravity after they explode that it overcomes a neutron degeneracy pressure and it collapses into itself. Its gravitational force is so strong that not even light can escape it, hence the name. How do we know so much about them if we can't get signals back from them? We actually don't. The only things we can measure are their mass, charge, and angular momentum. All other information is lost. Aren't you supposed to know everything about the universe? You know, because you're omniscient? Well, aren't you a smarty pants? Look, I tell you everything you need to know about becoming a star, so now you're on your own. <laughs>
Okay. Here goes nothing. <laughs>